I just closed my house this morning. After years of saving and planning, my wife and I were finally able to get the money together for the down payment and closing costs that would come with buying a house. Before I jump into my explanation of what happened to prompt me to record this, I want to make clear that nothing at all seemed out of the ordinary with the purchase of this house. The price was decent, but not surprisingly by any means. The inspection passed with only a few requirements for the seller to put a fresh coat of paint on the shed in the bark, and have the water heater replaced, and a few other minor things. While my wife and I were moving boxes in that first day, I happened to open the mailbox. I'm not sure why I did it, for anyone who's ever owned a house. You may understand the strange compulsion to open all the doors and explore all the nooks and crannies. So, I opened the mailbox. Inside my new mailbox was a letter, addressed to me specifically, with no postage or return address. I'll transcribe it next. I cannot begin to tell you how sorry I am for what you're about to read. If you're a family man, which I believe you are, I trust that you'll understand the gravity of my situation after reading this letter. I did what I needed to do in order to protect my family, even if that meant condemning another. If what I've been told is true, it's just you and your wife moving in, no children of which to speak, which is the only solace I have in selling you this house. There are certain things you must know about this house, many of which I cannot write even now, but what I can tell you is that if you do exactly what I've laid out below, there shouldn't be anything to worry about. Number one, do not allow children on your property. I cannot stress this enough. No trick-or-treaters, no Christmas carolers, no babysitting. Rule number two, always leave the light on in the basement. Rule number three, if you misplace anything, do not look for it. Rule number four, always set an extra place at the dinner table. Rule number five, if you have pets, especially dogs or cats, make sure to lock them up in a secure cage at night and when you're away. Rule number six, make sure you are in bed between the hours of 3 and 4am with the bedroom door closed. Again, I am terribly sorry and I hope that you follow these directions to the letter. I am terribly sorry and I hope that you follow these directions to the letter. Please do not be angry with me. I was only trying to get my children back. The letter was signed with the name of the previous owner. I really want to believe this is a cruel joke, but every time I look at this letter, my stomach turns. The part that scares me the most is the first bullet point. Do not allow children on your property. He may have done his research on my wife and me, but I don't think his research was extensive enough to know that my wife is currently nine months pregnant. She's due within the week, and the doctor said she could go into labour any day now. I wish I could just get out of the house, but literally everything I had went into buying it. So for now, my wife and I are stuck here. Does anyone know anything that might help? I contacted my realtor to see what sort of laws there were to help us out with the situation. I know in some states, there are such laws that protect new homecomers in the event that something about the house was undisclosed, pertaining to its history with violent crime and such. He said that currently, there are no laws that can get us around this sort of thing, because technically, there hasn't been reported any sort of violent or detrimental history pertaining to the house. Nobody was murdered there. It was never used to cook meth, and so on. He said that if the police reports come back clean, the law doesn't do much. He's going to do a little more digging, but he said it doesn't look good, but he'll do what he can. So, for the next couple of days, we did what we could. My wife has been doing her best not to think about the letter, and I've been superstitiously following the rules. Stupid, I know, but they're really simple rules to follow. I already have a kennel I keep my dog in at night, so that's already done and I just leave a closet light on in the basement, so that's another thing off the list. As far as the rest of it goes, I've been keeping a place at the dinner table set 
that we just don't touch. And I'm always in bed by midnight at the least, so no trouble there either. For those of you who have ever moved in your adult life, I'm sure you understand completely when I say that is absolutely exhausting. So I fully acknowledge that what I'm about to describe below can very well be the product of said exhaustion. But regardless, I feel the need to share this. I've been hearing sounds from the basement. At first, I thought it was mice, so I put a few traps down. But so far, I haven't caught a single thing, and evidence to the contrary has given me the idea that perhaps mice aren't my problem. We haven't set up anything in the basement yet, but we have taken boxes down and stacked them in the rooms we plan on keeping those things. During our second night at the house, after bringing the bulk of the items from the moving van to the basement, my wife and I heard a loud bong from the basement. I ran downstairs and found that one of the boxes had not only been knocked over, but the contents therein had been scattered everywhere. It wasn't like the box had just toppled over, it was like it had been poshed. The box happened to be full of old family photos, and some of those pictured were scattered across the room. My wife was the one that noticed the strange part. All the pictures that had been scattered had kids in them. Some of them were me, others of my wife, and some with various nieces and nephews. But every single one of them that had gone more than a couple of feet from the box were of children. We cleaned the pictures up, placed the box firmly on the ground, and left the main light on in the basement before going back upstairs. Fifteen minutes later, my wife was asleep in bed, and I was lying next to her. About twenty minutes later, I began to drift off. But even through the haze of sleep, I can remember distinctly hearing those scraping sounds coming from the basement, and although I can't be sure, I think they were coming up the stairs.